Databricks has created a great platform around its core product Apache Spark. And if you are looking for ways how to automate this platform using your existing DevOps pipeline, then this is the right video for you. Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about machine learning, advanced analytics or cloud computing, start now by subscribing to this channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you don't miss anything. In today's part, we are going to extend our existing DevOps pipeline, which we created in the first two parts of this series, to first deploy our model as a web API to pre-production and later on to production. I want to do a quick recap what I did so far. So in the first two videos, I created a workspace for Azure Databricks. I also created a project in Azure DevOps and I created a few notebooks in my workspace, one for training, one for inference. And those are the three which we are going to use in this video. So serving the model in Azure Machine Learning Services to build a container image. So in the end, we are building a Docker container out of that model. Later on, we are publishing that to Azure Container Instance as a pre-production environment and to Azure Kubernetes Service as a target for my production environment. If you want to have more details about those topics, I'm going to link the videos at the end of this video to give you further information about those topics. So let's go directly back into Azure Databricks. So in my repo, there are still my five notebooks linked to the Databricks environment, my Azure pipeline, DevOps pipeline, which I'm going to extend in a minute and I'm going directly into the pipeline now, click on edit and start to st change that pipeline. So I used already the idea of jobs to train the model and I'm going to use exactly the same idea behind the scenes to also publish that. And for all steps, I'm going to add a few variables. So first of all, the job name to build that Docker image, another job to push that to an Azure container instance, and last but not least, the name of the job to push that to an Azure Kubernetes service. So I, in the end, those are all the variables I need. And if I want to use Azure Machine Learning Services for that, I also need to install the Azure ML SDK into the Databricks cluster. To be able to do that, I'm going to add another step. So directly below the start cluster. So let's add that in here. And this step is installing the Azure ML SDK into the Databricks cluster. To be able to do that, I'm checking if the ML SDK is already installed on that cluster. If this is not the case, I'm installing the library, give it the cluster ID for my install target. And this, then I'm just saying it's a pip package and specifying the name of the package. After that, of course, I'm checking if the installation is still pending or installing or if it's already installed. So pretty much same thing I'm doing in here all the time, installing, checking in a loop if it's still installing and at the end checking if the installation succeeded. So now I've got my cluster up and running with the Azure ML service SDK installed so I can add another task to build the Docker image now. So let's go directly to the end, add that task, and I'm quickly running through what I'm doing here. So I gave the task a name, build container image. I'm specifying again a job description. That job is just executing the serving underscore build underscore container image notebook. It's running that. In this case, I decided to not use the standard job, but only doing a one-time run. So to show you the difference between those two, so I'm just using Databricks, runs, submit a new run, give it the JSON description of that, of that run, waiting until the run has been completed, showing the results of that run and checking if it succeeded to also either succeed or fail this pipeline task. After that, I want to add two additional steps for using the outcome of that run into one of the next tasks. 
because what I'm doing in here, if it's succeeded, I'm getting the output of the whole run and for example, store all those informations in a folder called metadata with a file name image.json to have the image ID back out of the run results. And to be able to reuse that, I'm adding a new task to first just copying the files from my source folder and in this case only the files of the metadata subdirectory to a central space where all my artifacts should be stored, so artifacts staging directory and afterwards I want to publish those artifacts from my staging directory into an artifact folder called drop and I want to store that in the Azure pipeline itself. So just edit the display name for the tasks. So copy files to the artifact directory, then publishing that to my drop folder and saving them. Let's save that and run the whole pipeline again. In the meantime, while this is still running, let me quickly go through the notebook itself. So the notebook itself just connects to that workspace. To be able to connect to that workspace, I added the name of the Azure Machine Learning Workspace, the resource group, the subscription ID in here, as well as a tenant ID, a client ID and a client secret. So all the things which are needed to connect Databricks to my subscription, to my machine learning environment. And as you can see, I created a large set of secrets within the Databricks environment. So to be able to do that, I stored the Databricks CLI to my local machine as well. So let's test that by listing all the clusters. All three are currently terminated, so that's okay. And there's also a section called Databricks Secrets. And with that, I can, for example, create a scope and put a value in there. So let's create a scope called YouTube Test, for example. And after that, I'm able to put a new key in there and then I will be moved to my standard editor, which is VI in that case, add a value above that line, just storing that and will be set to the secrets area. I can also show all the variables in that scope. And as you saw in my notebook example, I'm just using them to specify the scope and the workspace name, resource group, subscription ID, and so on. I'm also using a service principle to authenticate against the environment. And to create such a service principle, I'm just moving back to my Azure environment, open, for example, my Cloud Shell, and I can just execute either the command Azure AD service principle create for role-based access and give that thing a name. That would be option one. Or if I think about the least privilege principle, I can narrow that down to a specific subscription and add that as a contributor to that subscription. So I just need to specify my subscription ID in here. And then the name of the resource group should be MLOps minus YouTube to specify that scope directly and only for this resource group. After that, the password is showing here and I can just use that password, that tenant ID and so on to create all the relevant secrets for the Databricks environment. So just going back here, let me quickly show all the variables are saved in here. As you can see, I saved the client ID, the client secret. So just going back, that's my client ID, also called app ID, that's my secret. The name of the resource group, subscription ID, tenant ID and workspace name which are in here, so that's my tenant. My resource group name is here, subscription ID is there, and that's the name of my machine learning workspace. So I edit all the relevant information, and then I can just execute that. So I'm connected to my workspace now, and the next thing I want to do is again, find the best model, and then I'm just calling MLflow, Azure ML, build image with a model, the workspace where the image should be stored, the name of the model, which will be registered, the name of the image, which is used for the image in the end, as an optional parameter, the description, and I want to run that as an asynchronous task, but in this case, wait until the task completed. 
let me run that as well so it's registering the model and after the model has been registered it starts creating a docker image that'll take around about two to five minutes to complete while this is creating, let's have a look at the pipelines. I had to tweak the pipeline a bit because those two, as you can see, failed. And the reason was pretty simple. The latest version of the Azure ML SDK is not compatible with the version of ML Flow, which I picked. So that's why I fixed it to a previous version. And now it's running again. So if I go into that job, have a look, it installed the SDK successfully now built already the container and that's exactly the same thing I'm doing in that notebook currently and returned already the ID of the image and stored that as an artifact in my job in my pipeline and if I look at the artifacts look at the drop folder there's my JSON file which I can for example download and open so just to give you a brief idea what I changed so far in the pipeline, let's quickly go to edit. I added a new variable with the fixed version of that ML SDK and just used that variable in the installation process as well as in checking the current state of the installation. Let's also have a look in the workspace itself. If I go to models now, I've got two versions of that wine quality model registered, one with the manual execution of the notebook and one with the pipeline execution. And pretty much the same story with the images. One of them is already succeeded. That's the one of the Azure DevOps pipeline and the manual one is still running and not completed yet. I also want to restructure the pipeline a bit. Currently, this is just one pipeline doing everything and I'm using a preview feature called build pipeline stages to add those steps into a separate stage. To be able to do that, I'm just removing that pool and adding a stage description. So here's my set of stages. That's my build stage. It's called train, evaluate and register model. It's got a job called train, which is using the latest Ubuntu image. And underneath that job, I'm going to move those steps. So I'll just have to move them a little bit to the right to have them on the same level like the whole job. And now all those tasks, all those steps are under that job. And I can add another job, which is now pushing the values into pre-production or production. So let me just add another stage for deploying to the staging environment. I call that stage staging, deploy to staging. It depends on the build step and that this one has succeeded. And then it creates a new deployment called a deploy to Azure container instance. I also set a name for that. And I'm using again the Ubuntu latest image. And let me just add everything else for that step and quickly run through what I set up so far. So I define a new environment called called wine quality staging. I decided to have a run once deployment strategy and these are the steps. I'm downloading the artifacts from the previous step to that directory. After that, I'm specifying again the Python version, install the Databricks CLI, configure the Databricks CLI, pretty much the same thing we did in the previous step. Get the cluster ID because it should already exist when the previous stage ran. And then I'm creating a new job again for deploying to to an Azure container instance, specify all the variables which I already set for that job. And then I'm getting the image ID out of the JSON file and using that image ID to deploy that. So I'm just storing the model ID and then I'm again running a new job. And as a job parameter, I've got my image ID, which I'm using in here. Again, then I'm waiting for the Databricks job to complete and check if it succeeded. And let's do the production stage also. So I'm adding another stage. Let me quickly run through the steps because it's pretty similar to the first one. It's production, deploy to production, depends on staging, expects that this succeeded. But in this case, it deploys that to a Kubernetes service, creates another environment called wine quality production. And again, downloads the artifacts, sets the Python version, installs the Databricks CLI, configures the Databricks CLI, gets the cluster, creates an AKS deployment job, gets an image and starts the deployment process. So exactly the same thing, except that it's using different settings. So let me quickly save that. 
and go to the environment section because now it shows up that I created two environments and I want to go to the production first and in here I can add an approval check because I want to make sure that a specific group of users, in this case myself, needs to approve that before it deploys automatically to production and click on create and I added an approval that I need to approve that I can also add a group of people in there which are allowed to approve that step. So let's check that run. So it's in the first stage. I can have a look at the first stage itself and it's already running the training. In the meantime, let's look at the other options. So the image creation succeeded. It returns the model image as a JSON back from that notebook as a value. And let's also have a look at the other two deployment scripts. So that's the one for Azure Container Instance. In the end, it's retrieving the model image ID from the parameter section and then just connecting again to the workspace, creating a dev web service with that specific name and deploying the image directly to that Azure Container Instance, waiting until that process completed. And then for testing purposes, I'm downloading some data, creating a query and executing just a REST call against that API to test if this is working. And I'm doing pretty much the same thing on the Azure Kubernetes notebook, again, getting the image ID, connecting to the Azure workspace. In this case, creating an Azure Kubernetes service or connecting to an existing one, and then deploy a new service. And if that service already exists, it's just updating the image. And last but not least, I'm again creating some data, preparing the call and just going to that call. The main difference is in this case, I'm using a Bira token, so I need to do some authentication. For that reason, I'm getting the keys and then I can call that. And because I activated the approval cycle, this one is currently waiting. So let's click into that step. Review looks good and approve that step. And now the pipeline continues to run. Let's go one step back. The check has passed and it's queued again. And in the meantime, let's have a look at the deployment. So downloaded the artifacts, set the Python version, installed the CLI, configured the CLI, got the cluster ID and started the deployment job. And if I go to jobs, I see the job that the job run once for the deploy to Azure Container Instance. And if I go to more details, I can see that the ACI succeeded and that it did some test prediction, which worked fine as well. As you can see, that's the URL of my service. And if I go to the deployment section, I can see that this service has been deployed. If I go to the resource group itself, and have a look at the resource group values, I can see that container instance has been deployed and my Azure Kubernetes cluster is currently creating. Let's wait a few more minutes until that has been deployed as well. And the deployment completed successfully. For the first time, it takes quite some time longer because it has to create the Azure Kubernetes service first, which takes around about 15 to 20 minutes. In this case, it took 22 minutes to do the whole job run. And when I look into the job from the beginning, it received the model ID, it logged into the workspace. Then it took around about 20 minutes to create that Kubernetes service and round about three minutes to deploy that service. And afterwards, it tested that service by running a prediction request. If you'd like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel. And if you've got other topics you're interested in, please use the comment section below and share your ideas with me. And I also put some further videos up here with similar topics. So please check them out. And see you soon.